Hello, my name is Derek, and today we're going to talk about fuzzing with American Fuzzy Lock. So the first thing that we need to know about American Fuzzy Lock is what is it? So in order to do that, what I did was I googled it, of course, and I found that American Fuzzy Lock is a bunny, specifically a lop-eared bunny, and they're available in Idaho right now, and this is a picture of one of them. Um, this is also the way that you get the aptly named Pokemon, Lop Bunny. They just took Lop and Bunny and put them together. But actually, fuzzing, what is it? <clears throat> so fuzzing is this automated black box technique uh, used to test your code for vulnerabilities. So the entire idea is that you have developed source code, and you want to make sure that it is robust. And fuzzing is a way to test that by attacking it with multiple uh, malformed data injections, usually in some type of automated fashion. So this is some sort of randomized testing that uses invalid or unexpected or random data to, you know, alter inputs in the computer program and you hope for some sort of crash or assertion, well I guess technically you hope for none of those because then that shows that your program is actually robust. But to show that your fuzzing is working, you would get these crashes and then you would find out what uh, signal caused these crashes from what input. So the, I guess you could say the founder of fuzzing was Professor Miller. He was a professor at the University of Wisconsin. And so he said that his original work was inspired by being logged on to a modem during a storm with lots of line noise. He said the line noise was generating jump characters that seemingly were causing programs to crash. And so this noise suggested the term fuzz. So he used this to write um, basic, like Unix, uh, basic command line fuzzer for his Unix programs to test it. And you can write dumb fuzzers now just the same way where you just pipe uh, devs backslash random into whatever function and see uh, what happens. I like to think of it much better as if you're little Mac trying to beat King Hippo and you just punch wherever you can and try to find a soft spot. Now the specifics. So a fuzzer can find a majority of bugs uh, specifically, memory leaks and assertion leaks uh, are the most common. And it has different methods of attack. So the first type is application. And so on a desktop, this would be uh, attacking within the I.O. So it would be in the user interface or in the command line or an import export capabilities. For a web program, it would be like in the URL or in forms, RPC requests, or any type of user-generated content. A protocol attack is more uh, sending forge packets and trying to do some type of like proxy fuzzing. Uh, and then file format attack, you create these malform samples, and then the program opens them sequentially, hoping you know hoping for a crash. But like if it's your program, you don't hope for a crash, right? Uh, and you can attack the file format constraints, the structure, the conventions, the field sizes, flags. Uh, any type of that. Uh, now, specifically with American Fuzzy Lock, AFL, uh, they have a Buggerama trophy case, and it shows all of the cases where they, um, oh, a lot of the bugs that they found. So, like PHP here, we can look. Ah, look at this bug they found, and it was found with American Fuzzy Lop, and it, you know, passed the segmentation fault signal. So you can see aspects like that. So more specifics, there's smart and there's dumb. Smart primarily relies on uh, having some sort of template, some sort of background knowledge. Uh, so like, in a dumb fuzzer, you just send random data. But in a smart fuzzer, you uh, you know, like if you need, if a program requires some type of name field in its input, then you would know like the length you need. And so you would use that 
and just make sure all of your test cases are within that specification and that would be more of a smart fuzzy. And then you have all these different types within that. So mutation uh, is primarily suited for dumb fuzzers. Uh, you, you primarily just mutate your input time to time. The replay is uh, where you save what you inputted and then you just like try like a little mutation one after the other. Proxy is also a type of mutation where uh, they call it a man in the middle as well. And basically the idea is that you're in the middle of the client and the server. This works really well for like a network type program. You intercept and like maybe you mutate and uh, send forward the request. Generation is like a, a generation based fuzzer is where you generate from scratch rather than mutating from a, uh, a test case. And you use that to uh, test your, your program. And then evolutionary is a very advanced technique that uh, allows the fuzzer to get feedback from each test case and to do machine learning on the input format. So fuzzing has helped a lot in Heartbleed. So Codenomicon, uh, they actually were uh, using a fuzzer and that's how they found Heartbleed. So this guy in his blog applied American Fuzzy Lop to uh, find the Heartbleed attack. So here's the output. It took him a day and 11 hours for it to run and he found these four unique crashes. And this is you know, after the fact, and he's like, oh, look, I could have used this fuzzer to find, uh, find Heartbleed. And down here, they show us that, uh, hey, the guys from Codenomicon actually found Heartbleed using a different type of fuzzer. Now, furthermore, you can use fuzzing on emulators, and this is uh, L -Camp Tough developed AFL, and so here's his Twitter page, and he has this nice article about how they ran uh, AFL on the VBA, like the Visual Boy Advanced Emulator, and they found a stack buffer overflow, and then they exploited it in this YouTube video here. So now, I think it's time to discuss how we're going to use AFL. So the first thing you do is you generate test cases, then you compile your source code with the included GCC and then you give those to the fuzzer and you let it do its work. So here we go. So currently I am on Triton and I can look at my example code. So here I have this buffer overflow code. It's just, you know, setting up a simple buffer, and I got it from these people at thegeetstuff.com. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compile it using, uh, using GCC. It warns me about the gets function because, of course, that's terrible programming. And then here, I'm going to run the fuzzer. And I'm going to take my test cases, which I set up in directory. They're just two text files. One of them says hello, and the other one has a couple of format string exploits. I'm going to put all my output in output directory. And here's where my binary is. So uh, there it goes. So it already found a unique crash. It is just a buffer overflow after all. And there are a couple of things like Havoc and Splice are working here. Those are their types of attack. Splice is just having two havoc attacks together. Um, and so I can then look in my output directory and I can look at the crashes and I can see the crashes. So this is from havoc. It gave a segmentation fault error, right? Uh, and that's the output. I also ran it on format string from one of our earlier labs and after running three hours it found one unique hang and yeah it works very well.